So this time on Ask APT, we're going to talk about servo pressure when we talk about pump control. So pump control we generally refer to for a piston pump like the one I've got in front of me here. So this is just a small pressure compensator load sense piston pump and we've taken the case off it so that we can see what's actually on the inside of it. So when we look firstly, we have a valve plate down the bottom, which sits right down the bottom here, and our suction and pressure ports there. And on top of that sits our rotating group. And so our rotating group includes the barrel, the pistons, and the swash plate. And the swash plate's probably where all the magic happens, because that's what controls the displacement of the pistons, and also how much flow we're going to get out of this pump. In this particular pump, and this isn't the same for every single pump, but in this particular pump we have our compensator or our on stroke and we have our off stroke. So this piston here holds our, our swash plate in the maximum displacement position and if I pull that off we can see that that's the area that we've got working on it. And then this one is what we use to de-stroke the pump or make it go off stroke, minimum displacement, zero flow or low flow. As you can see there's a big difference in the two areas. We know that pressure over an area, if the area is bigger we'll get more force out. So what that means is, very very quickly, this one's trying to hold it on but if we give the signal or we tell the pump to de-stroke at any time it's always going to win because it's so much larger. So now let's talk about servo pressure or control pressure. Normally we talk about this in a transmission, so a closed loop transmission, and that's probably where we'll talk a little bit about it today. So in a closed loop transmission, our rotating group moves in both directions. And so what I mean by that is that in the neutral position, we deliver no flow. And when we move our swash plate one direction, we, move in one, we get flow out one port, and then when we go the opposite direction, we get flow in the other way. And that's how our closed loop transmission works and gives us flow and speed control. Now, we use pressure on a piston or on some sort of servo or a vane to make it move. And servo pressure or control pressure is needed to be able to oppose the forces on this. Now, you might be thinking, what forces could we possibly be getting on our rotating group or on our swash plate. It's all balanced. So while it is all balanced, the pistons here have pressure on this side of them. And so Newton's laws say that every force or every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So any pressure that is on this side of the pistons is also pushing out on the pistons. So these pistons are trying to push it on stroke in the balance of this. So what that means is that to push it off stroke, as the port pressure increases, we need to increase our servo or control pressure. And so it gets higher and higher to push it off stroke, the more and more pressure we have at this port here. In a load sense pump like this, it's not as important because our control pressure is our working pressure and we've got that big piston there. But in something like a closed loop transmission where we've got servo pressure or maybe control pressure or boost pressure actually controlling our swash plate, we need to be able to increase that pressure as our work port pressures increase. And this means that we can have better control of the swash plate, a stiffer system, but also it ensures that we've got full control of the swash plate. In some pumps, so, such as the Haglund's HD series pumps and the Parker Gold Cup pumps, what we actually do is we make sure that our servo pressure can get to more than our control pressure so that we can push it past neutral. So if we're working in, in this direction at the moment, we want to make sure that we can always push it back past. And in this particular pumps, it will actually allow the pump to go in the opposite direction and allow it to pay off in an overload situation. And we'll talk more about that at another time. So it's a short look at closed loop pumps 
and pressure comp and load sets pump controls and when we talk about servo controls. Hope you've enjoyed this. If you've got any further questions, ask us. Get your questions to us, put them in the comments below and we'll answer your questions as best we can.